Hello, sinners and scholars. My name is TB Skyne, and welcome to the Boss Designs of Dark Souls 2. So, Scholar of the First Sin is the edition that I have chosen to play after, like, basically consulting a bunch of people who know about Dark Souls more than I do. It seems like Scholar of the First Sin has, like, the more complete story and lore, although a lot of people expressed a preference for some of the enemy placement and some of the ways that the original edition was structured. And for the original Dark Souls, I went with, like, I... I intentionally shied away from the remaster because I wanted like the original OG Dark Souls experience but for this one I figured let's have the modern conveniences and I want to play the DLC anyway so this is the simplest way to do it. Now I, I've been told that there's like twice as many bosses in this game <laughs> as there was in Dark Souls uh, so either this video series is going to be a hell of a lot longer or we're going to have to I don't know maybe I'm going to have to be a little more restrained in how much I talk about every single boss in this goddamn game. But for the moment, the only thing that's really left to do to start us off with is to start us off. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. your fate. 
the fate of the cursed. Okay. All right. That was different. The visuals are very different too. Do I not get to customize my character? Did they not put character? Cr what? Oh, all right, then that's, that is very different indeed. Okay, we are in the things betwixt. My health is half for some reason. And I am this person. The visuals are very, there's an interesting upgrade in visual fidelity, but also a change in visual aesthetic going on here. Like Lordran was all about these sort of broken down, decrepit old kingdoms. This is, it's much more nature here. But the thing I noticed about the intro cinematic right off the bat, where Dark Souls 1 was all mythology. Like it was all about setting up the mythology and like the creation myth of the world and the, um, like the, the wider implications of like the, the, the gods and the age of fire and so on and so forth. This is a very different thing. This is personal. This is not about the creation of the world. This is about you as a person. It's very much like your fate, your memories, your mind, your state, your like how what you will do and where you will end up, which is a very it's a very different mood right off the bat. Lower the skeleton. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay, they're not hostile. That's good. Do I go that way or this way? Wee. Okay, I can't go that way. Mm. Well, towards whatever the hell this is, then. Oh, it's a house. The controls feel really different somehow. Like, they feel much more... The character feels much more smooth. And much more like, much more fluid. Like, especially the role is way more fluid than it was in the original Dark Souls, but it's also different. I'm gonna mess this timing up a hundred million times. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna screw it up. So the level design is telling me I need to go inside the house. But... What if I didn't do that? What if I didn't go inside the house? What if I went this way? Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 we're not, no, we're not gonna go that way. Okay. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh, my, your face. Hey, you're not so pretty either, lady. Face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes. You'll become one of them. Hollows prey upon men, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. There's a joke here I'm missing. Oh, now I can. Okay. Well. 
can give myself a name. That's nice. <laughs> At least you know your own name. Here's your reward for sharing. It's a human effigy. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? Think back deep into your past. Yes, it's an effigy of you. That is creepy. Oh, oh, okay, finally. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man, I have to make a decision now. I have to figure out what I want to do. Screw it, warrior. We can always go into something else. Oh, that's the tiny being's ring. Huh. Various items used to cure poison and restore HP. A seed grown from the tree of the tree of giants inedible. Toss into a bonfire to raise the strength of nearby foes. I no, I don't think so. So the the question I have here, I suppose, is the choice between healing wares, which seems like it'll probably be pretty good to start off with just to help me not die so much, or a seed of a giant, uh, of a tree of giants, or a petrified something. Because those two, clearly there's a, th it's a place somewhere in the game where you can use those to do a thing. But for the purposes of this playthrough, because like I kind of regret starting with the master key in, in Dark Souls 1. So we'll do healing wares. What? No, I don't want to finalize my creation. I want to... There we go. Oh, God, what an real looking f boy. No, absolutely not. I'm going to give you a respectable haircut. Okay, I see there's no respectable haircuts. No hair, then. <laughs> uh. Holy sh**, the eyebrow options are next level. Oh, those. Definitely those. And... Beard. Oh, that's a little sad. Mustache. Definitely mustache. So that just basically just defines the... Yeah, I like the big nose on this guy. Cool. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> Go through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, Hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. Well, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to die a lot. That's going to happen, ladies. <laughs> Brom is here. Stand behind Brom. Sometimes icy heart just need warm smile. So, three old women talking about one's fate and giving you gifts along the way. I'm already seeing the shape of a hero's journey happening here as well. Much like it did in Dark Souls 1. God damn it, that helmet looks stupid. Um, but I'm also, like, three old women sitting by a waterfall foretelling the fates of man. A little bit of an overlap with the fates or the Norns in there. Is this where I came in? It is not- Oh, bonfire! Bonf- Hello! 
Oh, good. Oh, I feel better now. Okay, cool. Wait, what? Okay. So, okay, I can just I can just teleport now. I have no spells. What does that do? Burn items. And I have the item box also. Nice. Why would I want to burn things? Well, okay then. Sorry about your wagon! There was a torch. I needed it. Oh. Oh. I am here to look after them. It is what my mother did. And her mother before her. And so on. So they were ex-fire keepers, huh? The old women were keepers of the fire. But now, the fire shows signs of fading. Wow, gee, that sounds familiar. And the kingdom is beset by hollows. Oh, gee, if only there was someone who had dealt with that kind of situation before and who might be able to help. Unfortunately, no such person exists. The old women are sisters. I am told there was a fourth. Long ago, fire keepers were commonplace. But now they are lost, scattered to the winds. Bonfires are places of respite. You may also light torches on them. Do I... Can I... How do I... We're gonna figure this out! We're not going anywhere until I figure this out. Oh... Oh, okay. Well, that's a fog door. That was soon. Oh. Oh, is that the big thing that left the footprints? It is. Why is it down there? Hello. Uh, hi. Okay. So it's not a petrification, or it is. Right, so we seem to have a Legend of Zelda puzzle going on here. Light all the torches! Although it's not clear to me that lighting them will actually do anything. Well, alright, let's just try it. And nothing happened. Well, there's nothing for it, let's die. It's gonna be a big boss in here. It's gonna be like an asylum demon situation. Oh, no, this is the tutorial area. Okay, cool. Sup? Oh, this is a bird's nest. Is there a giant crow somewhere? Oh. Is that who I think it is? Little crows. That was soon? Well, I guess technically they were in the Undead Asylum in the first game as well. So... Do I have any? I guess some of this is sort of... You, you. Not like that. No, no. Okay, fine. Like, yeah, fine. Okay, I guess they're here. What a thrill! Okay, well, so far, so tutorial. Oh no. Oh no! Not you! Why are you here? I kinda... How do I even get to them? I guess I need a way to unpetrify the statue? And then kill the hollow? Yeah, cause I can't jump down there. Uh, of all the things they could have kept! Of all the things! Oh, oh, that's, that's a, that's a lot of pools of blood, I think. Those are blood pools, right? Yeah. 
Hurrah for light. Okay, um, just run, run, ah, no. Well then, how did all those guys die? Ooh. Pretty, and again, very, I don't think we ever, did we ever really see the ocean in Dark Souls 1? I feel like we didn't. We saw water, but... Oh, that's pretty. Very different feel. Very big waves. Good grief. It must be very windy indeed. Divine blessing. What is you? Oh, that kind of divine blessing. Huh. Do I get an Estus flask at some point? I feel naked without it. Look carefully. Yes. Okay. Why are there pools of blood here? What's gonna attack me? Ooh, bonfire. Hello, bonfire. Seems like a really official bonfire, too. And then I can... Oh, sweet, I can just travel back to... Nice, okay. Are those pools of blood just people jumping off the cliffs? Because that's really dark. Are you the next monarch? Uh, you I don't. Merely a pawn of fate. <clears throat> Bearer of the curse. I will remain by your side till this frail hope shatters. Okay. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. Uh, oh! Oh God! Esther's there! Thank God! Go on and see the king. He who made Drangleg what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrin. You may level up by the power of the Emerald Herald. Bearer of the curse, seek misery. For misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Okay. Seek those whose names are unutterable. The four endowed with immense souls. Their souls will serve as beacons. Once you have found them, return here to me. So that hope will not fade away. Well, we're getting right into the mission quest thing, right? Okay, so she gave me Estus, and I... I can level up with her? Bearer of the curse. <clears throat> Seek souls. Larger, more powerful souls. Seek the king. That is the only way. To do what? Lest this land swallow you whole, as it has so many others. Oh, cool. Okay, so I can... <laughs> okay, so here, oh god, oh god, who designed this interface? Oh no, oh no, this is horrible. Oh good grief, it's not like Dark Souls 1 was that great, but oh lord, all these extra icons. No, this is terrible, this is like a JRPG from the PS1 era. Good grief. Anyway, can't level up yet, that's natural, I guess. Upgrade Estus Flask? I don't have, t okay. Over the hill and past the forest is the king's castle, where a man peered straight into the essence of the soul, but whatever came of it. Those who come to Drang Lake seeking salvation soon lose hope and turn hollow. It happens to them all, sooner or later. That blue knight at the base of the tower, his spirit is already broken. 
Although he does offer sound advice. Perhaps he is a foreshadowing of your own future. That tiny thing inside the ruins. An ancient being that will mock your very existence. Twitter? She imparts sound wisdom. Provided you find her on a good day. Twitter. <laughs> the sign you bear will drain your very souls. And without souls, you will turn hollow. Stay strong. Do not lose hope. Even when you have precious little time. For when the undead dies, it is never truly dead. But only one step closer to hollowing. Not all undead are hollows. But all hollows were once undead. If you find an Estus shard, bring it to me, so that I may ease your burden. Over the hill and well. Okay, I think we exhausted her dialogue finally. Good lord, she's a chatty lady. And a pretty lady. Pretty lady! Hello, pretty lady. Oh, hello. There's that guy. You're undead, aren't you? You have that distinct scent, the smell of irreversible fate. This is Majula. It is a kind of settlement. A place where life is almost normal. And in Drang Lake these days, there are very few places like that. Okay, so that's... Th I... So this is Firelink Shrine. And that's the Crestfallen Knight, and she's the Firekeeper down there, I guess. Ish. Something along those lines. I am Solden. And like you, I lost everything. And now I'm here. You probably heard that it was possible to break the curse here. No. Well, that's not true at all. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive. To walk this earth. That's the real curse. Right there. Yeah, we live in a society. We undead will never die. And that's quite a predicament, really. You will face invaders from other worlds at every turn. Right, multiplayer mechanics. Why not proclaim faith in the blue sentinels? When you face danger, the blue sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You need only accept their kind embrace. Uh, uh, uh... Hmm. Okay, so... From what I can make out from what he said is that... If I join that covenant, then sometimes people will help me when a uh, giant dad invades me. Okay, sure, why not? It's not like I have a better one. We... That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the blue sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the sentinels cradle you in their embrace. Okay, this is starting to sound sexual now. Hmm. That's probably gonna be important. So I think I've got, like, a, a, a basic idea of... ...directions. Because I get this four souls for the Lord big creature guys... ...who you need, and then there's various directions that you can go in from here to get to them. And I would imagine at some point there's some kind of gating with an item that you need to pass by some gate or another. Okay, I should equip my Estus flask, shouldn't I? Wait, I only have one? Oh, man! <laughs> oh, no! Well, I get, you know, that makes sense. Like, if, if, if the game has healing items like life gems, then it makes sense to only have one Estus flask. For like a big chunk of heal, and then the rest is, yeah. Right, so that's one direction to go. Let's finish exploring here. Who are you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. But now somebody's gone and locked the door. I... My dip... Is... There's... There's... 
I, there's a window. You could, you could just, it's not even like, you could probably just climb here. It's, you can just, you can just. Okay, well, sure, fine. Let's see. Path up there and a path into whatever the hell that is. And a house. Hello, house. Aw, oh, kitty cat. Oh. Oh. Talky cat. And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. Well, I'm just surprised I can chat with a cat in the first place. Well, suit yourself. Oh, yes. You may call me Shalqua. Enchante. Is she so, French? What did you want, anyway? Ooh, you smell wonderful. <laughs> Oh, okay, so she... She does covenant stuff. And sells rings. Treasure ahead in short, try attacking. Oh! Oh, Jesus! Holy sh... Okay! Uh, wow! Alright! <laughs> that was a corpse? Hello, corpse! Estus flask shard. Does that mean I can get more Estus? Hey! So does that give me more Estus, or does it... Yay, more Estus. Cool. Sweet. Well, that's nice. Okay. Is there a side entrance? No. Maybe over here. What the? Uh. What the hell? Oh, they don't take damage, do they? Oh, they don't take damage at all! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay! I guess that's a thing. I guess I'll just ignore them. And there's nothing down here. All right, this is off. <laughs> I need a better weapon. Okay, well, okay, so we I think we have explored the opening area now, more or less. That only took about an hour. So now the question is, what do we do? Because we have a few options. Like there's the like that passage in there, or we can go up the cliff, I guess, or jump down the hole, except that's probably gonna kill us, or there's, I guess, this. That seems the most friendly somehow, so sure, why not? Hello. Now, this is more familiar Dark Souls-y territory. Rusted coin. Temporarily boosts luck. This coin is engraved with the image of a god that was worshipped in ancient times, but no one knows its true origins. Cool. I guess. Oh, wait, hang on. What was that? The way of increases HP, not developed religion, is a humble prayer that's spread naturally amongst those seeking help. When apostles of blue are invaded by dark spirits, they can receive assistance from masters of other worlds. Uh, we are equipping that, yes. Also because more health is good. Well, I can't open that, so... Alright. Now the real fight begins, by the way. Are you ready? Okay. Sure. Why not? Ominous. That's a treasure chest. But it seems like if you fall down, you can't get back up. So we should be careful. Okay.
Oh, effigy. Nice. See, because now I'm suspicious that... Because the, mm, there's an item down there, so you could jump down. But there's also pools of blood literally everywhere. Either everyone playing Dark Souls is really f***ing bad at it, or something terrible is down here somewhere, and they all died trying to escape from it. Oh, it was something terrible. Okay. Oh, that's a big boy. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how strong that thing is. Like, I, I'm just intimidated because it's big, but then so is the asylum demon, and I managed to beat him after a few tries. Like, can we just ignore each other? I'm not here. Everything's cool. Has he seen me? No. Okay. Sweet. Ah. Oh, I see the hollow multi-attack is back. Okay. He's not interested in me. Well, that's fine. He wasn't even hostile. I don't know what I was scared of. Oh. Wow. Same. Okay. Oh, jeez. Horde mode all of a sudden. Oh, you cannot cancel out of an attack very quickly with a roll. Oh, it restores health slowly, I see. Oh my god! Jesus! Cough! Annoying. Well, I didn't die in my first fight. That's something. I give my life, not for honor, but for Green Blossom. Uh-oh. Hello. Could you please just die right away? Thank you. Okay. Well, they restore kind of slowly, too. So there's a lot of gradual healing in Dark Souls 2, in other words. Okay. Oh, okay. My sword is nearly broken. Again. My broken sword is nearly broken. Oh, no. Whatever shall I do? And now it's broken. Fine. Fine. Cool. That's great. I should have equipped the dagger, shouldn't I? I really should. Guess we're going with the dagger. It's faster, too. All right, firebomb guy over there. N anyone else? No. Cool. Oh, he's got. Oh, he's got a big sword. He looks different too. Fall down, dude, dickhead. Don't die. Okay, thank God. Yay! A real sword. Yay! Oh, good. Thank God. Oh! Hello. And then I guess... Yeah, that was... Okay, I see. I see. I see. Ah. Fuck. Things. Oh! There is a thing. Wood bolt. Okay, so that's if I get, like, a crossbow. Huh. I feel like that dodge roll didn't do me much good. Despair. Oh, I can... Oh, okay. Hmm. So there's a way to jump down. Oh, sup? A witching urn. Oh, it's a firebomb, basically. Okay. Bonfire! Hooray! So 
So, human effigy, cool. Life gems, nice. It's a little weird that I can't just level up out here. Fragrant tree branch with a faint sweet smell restores the life of things turned to stone. Tiny bug that produces light. Bright bugs are said to f comfort the dead and are found in the marshlands leading to the undead crypt. By ingesting a bright bug just before death, the moment at which they glow the most brightly, one attains great power for a short time. Often utilized for a last second resort for adventurers who have lost their way. Cool. Oh, she stole the blacksmith's key. I see. Well, I guess we'll buy that then. So it might be worth coming back to her. I guess you can climb down to whatever's down there. Uh. Oh, well, screw that for now. We will follow the obvious path. Okay, well, I think I'm getting used to the controls slowly. Oh, this feels like there's a trap somewhere. Right. Wait, so I just came here to get the key? Is that it? Oh, there's a hole I can climb down. Okay. That's a lot of fire. Oh, you are ugly. I don't want to fight you. Hi, are you... Alive-ish? Oh, he is. Please die. Thank you. I'm just gonna, like, if you're not gonna mess with me, then... Not open from this side, okay. Then, I mean, I guess I can't talk to you? No? Okay. Yeah. Well, you are harmless, I hope. Please. Oh, no, there he is. I figured. I figured. Right. Fine work, skeleton. Ha! <laughs> I lost all my stamina to failed attacks. Ugh, that's pathetic. Well, all right then. Am I gonna die now? No, okay. This is weird level design, I have to say. I, I really, I feel kind of turned around and lost. Oh, he's big. Uh, Taurus demon feels. Can I get to that guy? Oh, I can. Well, better than having to deal with him. Just, please let me kill him. Oh, that's not good. That's bad. Stop it! It's a little tiresome to be shot at from every direction. Stop it! But at least it's not an Orlando. Don't jump in the water! And it doesn't... there's no other place I can... Nope. Nope. Oh, there is. Kinda. Okay. Ugh. No! Oh! 
Why did that happen? I did not press that direction on my goddamn joystick. Well, that's one death. <laughs> that's the first one. And oh boy. Oh no. Oh, I'm not looking pretty. Well, it, it took like an hour and a half for me to find a way to kill myself, so. Go me. Right then. Oh, that's a multi-hit attack, kinda. Halberd, huh? I might prefer something with a little more range. I'm on- okay, I can't actually use it. Hello. Can I just walk past you? Would that be- would that- uh, I don't think I can backstab you by the looks of it. Hey, you just walk right through shit, don't you? <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Heroes in a Half Shell. Oh, turtle power! Oh lord, oh god, oh lord, oh dear. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I don't like that. Ugh. Jeez. Oh, hello. I remember you. Cough. No, I don't want to target the guy up on the battlements. I want to target the guy who's hitting me in the face with a spear. You jerk. How the f*** do I deal with him? There's so many enemies here that I just don't see how I'm supposed to even get to. That's kind of frustrating. <laughs> Those are ballista. It feels like the moment I walk through that door, something's gonna shoot me in the face with a giant bolt. Are you... An enemy? No? Hello there. Traveling all alone in these treacherous times. Well, I hope you have a very good reason. Oh, hogwash. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. I journey hither and thither on a sort of... Treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Really? Is that what's been happening to me? Oh, yes. You'll be cautious if you go any farther. There's treasure in there for certain, but the entrance locks from behind. Oh, really? I saw the same design earlier. I was with this warrior, you see, and he insisted that he go Did he now? First. The rather brusque fellow tried to swipe the loot for himself, but it trapped him inside. I still have the gent's ring. I do hope he wasn't harmed. Really? I'll leave this one to you. Oh, gee. Is that what you'll do, my friend? Okay. Why are those guys hitting a tree? Oh my god. Stop it! For fuck's sake! Can't we just have a good old honest fight where you come down near me and swing your weapon one time and don't hit me and then I stab you multiple times? Whatever happened to tradition, huh? They're really mad at that tree. Crossbow, finally. Sup, fuckers! Oh, okay, I'm dead. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should probably have healed before going down there. Well, then, that's two. I guess I have to deal with a ninja turtle again. So it's more a situation of like one hit and then get back. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's a ladder right there. Ah! What the? F Ah! 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 No! No! 
<laughs> what? What the f- Mamma mia! What the sh- <laughs> What the sh- <laughs> The f*** did you come from? What? What the? What? What? That was some anime bullshit. Did you see that sword? Final Fantasy VII calls. They want their weapon designs back. I want that sword though. I really do. I got cursed by him and it looks like it sapped away a bunch of my maximum health. I hope there's a way. So it's not like Curse in Dark Souls 1 where it just kills you. No! Ugh. I'm so used to being able to dodge really quickly out of an attack like in Dark Souls 1. I just can't get the timing down yet. Ugh. I'm spending life gems like they're candy! Fine. Let's see what's gonna kill me here. There it is. Hey, asshole. One has to assume that he just loots whoever dies in here. Definitely more guys than there, though. Yep, hello. There's gonna be a boulder rolling down. Well, maybe that'll come in handy for something. Oh! Oh, there was a wall! Neat, thanks. Don't be a mimic, don't be a mimic. Oh, thank God. Sorcerer's Staff and Amber Herb. Well, hmm. Less useful to me, I guess. I gotta say, this game has gone a really long time without giving us an introductory boss. Like, by now, I would have already, like, died to the Asylum Demon a couple of times in Dark Souls 1, probably. I lived, b Ooh. Well, I see you managed to escape. I hope that brave warrior didn't come a cropper either. Be careful out there. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> but I want those items, though. Yeah, I wasn't wrong. Oh, Jesus! Oh, that was more guys than I thought. Wait, is my health going down? I feel like I have less. Oh god, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. Every time you die, you lose maximum he Oh no. Well, if you can break chests. Oh, I can't break doors. Eh. Can I get that weird giant ass sword man to appear again, I wonder? I'm kind of scared to. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, nope. Ah! What the f? Wow. What the f was that? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Okay, there was a super chat, let me just see. Oh, love your video, Sky, and also that door above the bonfire doesn't look very sturdy. Uh... Wait, so I can break doors. Um, yeah, I'd really prefer if you didn't spoil me like that. I mean, although, to be honest, I probably would never have figured it out myself. No, no, no! Oh my god. Okay. Well, spoiler or not. That does seem... Oh, hey. I remember you! Night night chart. Neat. Sure is dark up here. I do like the idea of, like, that torches being necessary to get through certain areas. I like that a lot. One of these is gonna be a mimic. I swear to God, one of them is. Oh sh! Yeah. Fuck. Oh, he can't hit me when I'm. Okay. 
Oh, please don't die from fall damage. Okay. I have lost so many f***ing souls that I could have used to level up with. Door open now? Nope, door not open now. Okay. Yay! I got, like, a few souls back. Okay, tell me that that guy doesn't come back. I really don't want him to. Oh! 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 Ugh. Good God. Where's my mustache? Oh no! My mustache is gone! Okay, so why are those guys hitting a tree? We need to investigate. If it is a tree. Oh, the tree looks like a person, I see. Oh! <laughs> you! So there was that thing about giants being, like, trees growing from giants, right? So, I guess that tree was a giant, and they fought the giant in life? And now they're doing, like, the, the, the undead thing of repeating what they did in life for all eternity. Classic ghost story stuff. <laughs> do 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 Oh, I like the crossbow now. Sorcery required a head. Oh! Oh, can you blow those barrels up? Please don't blow up. Uh, I feel like... I don't know if which ones are explosive, though. Homeward bone. I am tempted. I'm not gonna lie. Locked, and that one does not look breakable. Oh, goody. Trap ahead. Yeah. Ah ho 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 ho! Hello! There's more than one of you, I see. Ugh, jeez. Do I have any items other than the effigy that might be able to... Get me my maximum health back! Not so much. <clears throat> okay. Where the hell are the bosses in this frickin' game? There's supposed to be a whole lot of them. Hey! Is this a shortcut, then? Yay! A shortcut back to the bonfire. Classic Dark Souls. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Is that a shard you found? Here, let me see it. So that I may help you. Yes, please life. help me. To see however faint. Please, for the love of God. Do I have more? No, I only had one. Okay. Okay. Right. So now we have to start making some actual decisions about the build we're doing here. AD ADP is dodge rolling, so we need that. Right. So the thing that worked for me in Dark Souls 1 was just... Becoming as tanky as possible and wading through things with a giant broadsword, a giant double-handed weapon. And I'm just tempted to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I'll put three points into adaptation for now. And some strength and dexterity for the rest of it. I think. Yeah, let's do that. How are we about to die? Are we going all the way down to that big lizard thing? No, 
no, we're going past him? Okay. Neat. No good idea jumping down. Okay. Oh, is it now finally boss fight time? It seems like it... Oh, oh hello. Alright. I can't break that one. No. Right leg. Weakness leg, then try sir. Okay, so it's definite. Yeah. Finally! <laughs> we finally made it to a boss fight, I hope. Okay. Let's see what's gonna kill me today. Oh. Uh. Oh, he has a hole for a face. Oh, he's very big. Oh, he's super large. Oh, no. Oh, I do like the communicate. Yeah, hi, hello. Okay, uh. The last giant. Okay. I do like the communication that's here of. Oh, sh of, like, he's clearly someone who's been in a lot of fights before. Like, a lot of people have tried to kill him. As communicated by all the weapons sticking out of him and that giant shard of stone. So that's what giants look like, huh? Well, normally they probably look a little better fed, I would imagine. Okay, so we're dealing with a bit of an asylum demon thing here. In terms of the very first boss the game is throwing at- Oh, we can target his legs. Tar can is throwing at us. Ow. Is designed to be a very big, huge, mech large guy. Who's scary because he's much bigger than you. And you kind of have to overcome... Ah! Your fear in order to get in on him. So far, he's pretty easy to read, but oh, he got a weapon. He pulled a weapon out of himself, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, good. Great. Oh, he's got extra range now. That's bad. Uh oh, oh, I got stomped on. I'm dead. Oh, I'm somehow alive. Oh, jeez. Okay. Ow. Oh, he's not happy. He's not happy at all. Okay. So, would you please do a large swing? Thank you. Okay. Okay, this is going better than I thought. I'm able to damage him. Ah. Wait, was that it? Holy sh! Wow. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Whew. Okay. Right. So much like with the asylum demon, it's a very big, scary guy who isn't actually like. Cause what I noticed is if you just kind of dive through his large swings, you you get through it. Okay. Cool. So, the last giant. He was made of stone, he almost looked like. He was embedded in this stony arena. Um, almost as though he'd been thrown down here or imprisoned somehow. And again, we deal with nature imagery much more in Dark Souls 2 than we do in Dark Souls 1. In Dark Souls 1, the thing I remarked upon with the Asylum Demon back in the day is that um, he, like, the first thing that happens is you're in an asylum, which is you're in an institution of power, basically, where you're locked up just for being undead, and then the guy you have to kill in order to get out is, well, the warden, basically. Like, he's the guy who's keeping you trapped. This is kind of a very different thing. This guy was trapped already, and then you showed up and pissed him off by existing, and he decided to have a nice little last fist fight with you, I guess. 
interesting. Because this almost kind of reminds me of Nito. Like how Nito was kind of dumped into the into sort of a, a deep dark cave uh, unceremoniously. This kind of has that same feeling of like something that's been dumped like a leftover. Like a waste. I guess he was just left for dead. Like, I guess people, whoever stuck that giant shard of stone in him just figured... Yeah, he... He's... He, we threw him down here, he's probably dead, it's fine. Okay, so that key doesn't open that. What the hell does the soldier's key open, then? Maybe I should actually look at it to find out. Opens the soldier's door in the forest of giants. Right. Where is that? Is that this one? Aha! Oh, shoo! I think we've been going for long enough, so I'm gonna head back to the bonfire and let Future Sky and take over from there after I've done a little bit of checking on the item descriptions and stuff. Soul of the surviving giant who was bound below the forest of the giants. The lord of the giants who had brought wrack and ruin to the entire kingdom was said to have been felled by an unknown warrior. His beaten and broken remains were then dragged beneath the stronghold where he was sealed away. Use the special soul of the last giant to acquire numerous souls to create something of great worth. So much like in the previous game, you can use them to make special weapons, I guess. So, that was the last of the giants. The first boss that, uh, well, maybe not the first boss of the game, because it kind of feels like it could have gone in many different directions, but certainly the first one that we so happened to run into. And I am going to throw it over to Future Skyen for an exploration of exactly what that guy feels like as an enemy in Dark Souls 2, as an introduction to the bosses of this particular video game. So, over to you, Future Skyen. Well, thank you very much, Paskine. And before we get into talking about The Last Giant, let's have a brief talk about Dark Souls 2 itself. In the last series, I never really set out to do a full, like, lore or theme analysis for the video game as a whole. I just wanted to talk about some cool boss characters and flail around trying to beat them. This time around, well, in anticipation that my discussion is probably going to get a bit wider before this series is over, I thought we might as well get a head start on it right away. Of course, you may have already noticed that because of how incessantly I kept comparing the beginning of Dark Souls 2 to Dark Souls 1, especially comparing the last giant to the Asylum Demon, a comparison that is both apt and not very apt at all, but we'll get into that. First though, as I brought up at the start of the episode, Dark Souls 2 sets itself apart from Dark Souls 1 pretty much immediately with its intro. Where the intro to Dark Souls 1 is all about establishing the stakes and the mythology of a broader world, Dark Souls 2 is quite intensely personal. The story opens with your struggle, you collapsing in a forest, you thinking back to meeting a wise old woman who tells you about the curse that is afflicting you and what you might be able to do to lift it, specifically going to Drang Lake. It features psychedelic imagery showing a figure who seems to be your mother being swallowed up gradually by the curse, the dark sign that is on your shoulder, as though your very memories, as the intro also implies, are being drained away. And this focus on the personal continues well into the introductory areas of the game. You meet the three former fire keepers who laugh at you and mock you, but who also constantly talk to you and remind you that you are cursed. You will lose your personality. You will lose your memories. You will Will go hollow and by the way here's a human effigy in the shape of you a human effigy designed by the way complete with a spiraling black hole on the back of the figure similar to what we saw in the intro cinematic not only is this human effigy you it is a complete representation of you and a representation of your struggle with your curse and so the narrative of Dark Souls is setting itself up to be a narrative of overcoming the curse. And so the question is, what is the curse? Not just what is it in the game's lore, but what does it represent thematically? And as we see in the intro, and as everybody from the former Fire Keepers to the goddamn Crestfallen Knight can't wait to remind you, the curse is draining you dry. It is sapping you of your memories and your personalities, and it's making you hollow. 
In my video about the many meanings of Dark Souls 1, I talked about how depression as an interpretation of Dark Souls 1 maps really well onto the mechanics of the game, but doesn't really square that perfectly with the narrative of Dark Souls 1, because Dark Souls 1, as we've discussed, is entirely mired in grand mythologies and deep meditations about the fundamental nature of society. Dark Souls 2, on the other hand, seems to be inviting those comparisons much more explicitly. And the lens through which Dark Souls 2 so far seems to be setting it up is trauma related to motherhood. Specifically, I think, to the loss of a mother. That certainly seems to be what the imagery in the intro is implying, is that the curse, the wound, the thing that is draining you is the loss of your mother or, depending on how you want to interpret the imagery, the loss of the mother of your child. Either way, it's a tragedy revolving around the trauma of loss as it relates to women. And just to get a little bit out there with the interpretation right off the bat, because why wouldn't we start off this way? Did you notice how you enter the world of Drang Lake from a place of darkness, where you then pass through a long vertical narrow slit that ushers you through a narrow passage into the light of a new world that you don't understand yet? And did you also notice how, like, the first NPCs you encounter are old, experienced women who are sort of, who, who help usher you into this new world by um, they're making predictions about what kind of person you'll, air quotes, grow up to be? And then once you enter into the world of Drang, like, the person who can help you grow and develop is very emphatically and obviously a mature woman. I'm just saying, if there's some birth theming going on in Dark Souls 2, they started in on it right from the get-go. <laughs> anyway, how does any of all of that nonsense tie into The Last Giant? Well... The thing that you notice about giants right away, whether they are in the form of an old petrified tree that some undead are hitting with their spears for some reason, or in the form of, well, literally the last living giant, is that they don't have faces. And in terms of character design, that's kind of a big deal because the face on any humanoid character is one of the things that the human brain is most programmed to respond to. The human brain experiences a phenomenon known as pareidolia, and it's the tendency in the human brain to see patterns in things that resemble something that is familiar to it. This is why people will see images of Jesus in their toast, and it's why people will see images of faces in everyday objects. And pareidolia manifests itself in faces very, very, very often because there are huge circuits in the human brain that are dedicated almost entirely to the recognition of faces. And not necessarily specific faces, but just recognizing the features of things that look like a face, because that's so important for human social communication. Our brains have developed to do that. So, when you are designing a character, especially a humanoid character, and you take the face away, you profoundly anonymize, and in many cases also dehumanize, the character. And it's perhaps notable, therefore, that the last giant doesn't have a name. He's the lord of the giants, the most powerful and presumably most important giant that there has ever been. But all he is to you is the last one. He has no identity when you meet him. He's just functionally a wild animal, and that's also how he behaves. Once he sees you, he goes into a berserker rage, literally hurting himself in order to get free enough that he can start fighting you, and during the fight, he tears off his own arm to use as a club against you. That is a profound desperation to kill, and we have seen that desperation in other characters in Dark Souls before, haven't we? That single-minded determination just to fight, but not necessarily to fight for any particular reason. We have seen that kind of self-destructive madness. The last giant has gone hollow. This is why he doesn't have a face. This is why he charges at you with such reckless abandon. He has become what the world is threatening to turn you into. A mindless, 
raging hollow that has forgotten everything it once was. Its name, even the person who defeated it, is forgotten. All of its identity, all of what it used to be, is gone. And all that's left is a husk. Beaten and broken remains. So, if we take Dark Souls 2 as a personal journey, then the last giant is a cautionary tale. He's the warning. He is the signpost that says this is what you might become. At the end of your journey, when you have traveled all across the world and you have been stabbed with more swords than you can count and when you've been wounded and hurt and broken and thrown down and shattered over and over and over and over again, you will be as he is. And that's a pretty strong choice, I think, for a first boss in the game. Except, of course, he might not technically be the first. As I commented on during the game, it seems to be the case that you can actually go to plenty of different places right off the bat. The Last Giant might not be the first great enemy that you encounter. This particular signpost of your potential fate might not be something that a lot of players even see until much later in the game than I did. Which, again, makes my journey a lot more personal. In Dark Souls 1, everyone sees the Asylum Demon first. Most people run into the Taurus Demon and the Capra Demon in that particular order. In Dark Souls 1, a lot of your journey is predestined. In Dark Souls 2, at least so far, you seem to be somewhat more free to create a journey and indeed a meaning for yourself. Hey, thank you very much for watching. That was a very long first episode of The Boss Designs of Dark Souls 2 because, well, the game took its damn sweet time in <laughs> letting me get to a damn boss. And there was so much to set up, like there was a whole lot of dialogue that needed to be listened to, there was a whole lot of exposition and establishment that needed to happen for well, both me and for the rest of you to be able to follow what's going to be happening as we head on into the deeper reaches of the game. And since this game ostensibly has like twice the number of bosses of Dark Souls 1, we will have to pick up the pace eventually, probably doing something like maybe double episodes for bosses that are closer together, or I don't know, figure out something, maybe skip some bosses if they are just repeats of previous ones. However, I end up deciding trying to tackle that particular problem. I hope you have enjoyed this first episode, and I hope that you will like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, hit the bell icon, you know, make the numbers go up so that I can keep having my channel and I can keep making these videos for you. If you want to support the channel more directly, well, Patreon is right there for that particular purpose. You can sign up for a monthly subscription of like a dollar or whatever you want, and there's some rewards and stuff that go on over there, priority access to my Discord, stuff like that. If you don't want to sign up for a monthly subscription, there are tip jars in the description down below. You can give me a one-time tip to say, hey, that was like well over an hour on like the first bit of Dark Souls 2, and for some reason that has made me want to give you three dollars, here you go, then I would be very grateful for that help. As I say at the end of all of my videos, even very small amounts like a dollar a month or a one-time three dollar donation can mean a lot to content creators like me. It can be the same as literally thousands of views on our videos because ad revenue, as it turns out, doesn't really pay that well. So whether it's me or whether it's someone else, if you have an online content creator whose work you enjoy, please consider supporting them directly. It matters a lot more than you think. If you haven't enjoyed this video, of course, you can feel free to hit the dislike button down below. The dislike button that has been hit so many times before, that has been beaten and broken and pounded down into the dirt and left for dead at the bottom of the YouTube watch page, but still above the comments which take an even worse beating than that every single day. Yes, you can beat them again. But would it really be a victory to smash something that has already been smashed so thoroughly? No. I say you ignore that broken and beaten wretch and instead take on a real challenge. Smashing that like button. Now there is a worthy opponent. Thank you very much for watching. 